Welcome to our Red Feather Mind, Body, Spirit Facebook Live event. I'm yet again Christopher McClure, and today we have two special, very special guests, uh, celebrated creators, John and Kathleen Matthews. Uh, John and Kathleen have published several titles with us. Um, most recently, John, you created the uh, Beowulf Oracle, The Wisdom of the Northern Kingdoms, along with uh, Virginia Chandler and illustration by Joe Machine. I'm right here, my copy. I'm so, so happy to have it with me. Um, and Kathleen, we have your Celtic Book of the Dead coming out with us in the fall with illustrations by uh, Dante Mayer. So we want to catch up today to learn more about uh, the celebrated couple uh, and what's ahead. But uh, first, a little background on uh, John and Kathleen. Uh, John Matthews is an independent uh, writer and researcher and New York Times bestselling author who has devoted much of the past 40 years to the study uh, of Arthurian legends, uh, traditions, the grail, and myth in general. He's produced a number of uh, successful divinatory systems based on early spiritual beliefs, including the Arthurian Tarot, the Wildwood Tarot, the Grail Tarot, um, and the Tarot of Light and Shadow. He's won uh, several awards. Some of uh, his titles have been recommended by the New York Public Library, and he's a regular guest at tarot conferences. Kashi Matthews is an author of over 80 books. I haven't, I haven't read any book. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> including the, <laughs> including the uh, Art of Celtic uh, Seership, The Lost Book of the Grail, The Ancestral uh, Oracle of the Celts. Uh, she is an authority on Celtic wisdom and spirituality, teaching internationally, as well as an experienced uh, shamanic healer who's worked with the dying. Uh, she has a shamanic killing practice in Oxford, UK. So uh, this has been a long time coming, uh, this uh, um, this talk here. I'm so glad we could finally uh, do it. And uh, welcome. It's great to see you both. Uh, we'll be seeing you soon again here in, in person in a couple of days. <laughs> so that would be nice. Indeed. Well, it's very good to be here. Very good to see you anyway. Yes. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah, we, don't, we don't often get to sit next to each other and talk, do we, about, no, about indeed. the things we do? Because we're nearly always... <laughs> Too busy or running off in different directions. Or in separate rooms writing. Indeed, yes. <laughs> right. Yes, I, I, I actually that that's hammered home by one of the uh, I have your stack of things you've you've worked with us uh, with right here at my desk. Um, and um, in, in the beginning of the uh, Da Vinci Enigma, that this one that you've done with us. Um, yes. John, actually, you, were, you were supposed to work on this, but you didn't have a chance to because you, <laughs> you know, I think when it was originally inspired, that was uh, that's what you said. Well, we were in Venice. We were in Venice together and we thought it would be a lovely idea to do. And then, of course, John had like two or possibly three deadlines all coming up one after the other. And um, mm. so I ended up having to do it by myself. But that was fine. Right. You <laughs> did a great job, too. It's still still one of my favorites of all the ones that uh, you've worked on, certainly. Um, yeah, it, I mean, uh, there's... It, it came out at exactly the right moment without intending to, because it was that moment when the Da Vinci movie came out. With Tom Hanks, I know. Uh, you know, it, we we hadn't even planned that. It just mm -hmm. be that those two things mm -hmm. appeared at the same time, and of course, it became something of a runaway bestseller as a result of that. Although it had absolutely nothing to do with the film or the Grail, or Dan Brown, or Dan Brown. Or Dan Brown. There you go. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. No. But a lot to do with Da Vinci. So yes. there we are. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's really a classic, um, and so it's 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 definitely in my library uh, here now of, of decks that I really uh, admire. Um, and most recently here, um, we have this Babel, Babel Oracle, Babel Oracle, um, which is just just incredible. Uh, we're doing a little uh, soiree next week at the Atlantis Bookshop uh, to celebrate uh, this year. Um, it's a 6.30, I believe, Atlantis. So if you're in the area, please stop by and, and, uh, and join 49 us. 49A Museum Street. There you, there you go. We got the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> we'll, have a, we'll have a whole rush now. That's going to be it. <laughs> it's, in, it's in the shadow of the British Museum, and it's the oldest um, occult bookshop in London. And uh, it's always been a drop-off place for visitors who want to, you know, mingle a little bit. And you never quite know who you're going to run into in there. And it's a hundred right. years old. This, years old. This very yeah. year. So. Yeah. This year, this month, I think, is a celebration. Yeah, we were. Yeah, at we, the, were there we were at the, the party. At the party. It, it had great. everything. It had a piper who walked up and down and skirled the pipes. It had. Oh, okay. visitors and um, people from all over the world basically and uh, wonderful audience very exciting all of it Kathleen read a poem which she'd written especially for the occasion and uh, it was it was wonderful wonderful fantastic fantastic well I'm looking to our own gathering looking forward to that uh, next week um, as well so uh, but for this here um, before we get into too many of your titles I mean there's just it, it, it's it's funny you've done so much and we haven't actually had a Facebook Live here together, so there's so much we could talk about. We could do several hours. Mm. But I really wanted to. Get, <laughs> I really please. wanted to. <laughs> what's that? Please not. <laughs> please, please, please no. <laughs> no, don't worry. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, so you've been working in in just uh, metaphysics, mind by mind by spirit, um, and uh, just uh, general academia for so long, and 
with these uh, these these uh, the acceptance of things. How, how have things changed overall as far as how people are using, say, divination um, and acceptance of that? As far as what you've seen over, over the, the time that you've been in this uh, in this category, how, how do you, what do you see? Do you want me to? Well, we, we really, you know, sort of consider ourselves to be part of the sort of the general Western esoteric tradition. So uh, mm -hmm. we don't regard ourselves as new age in any way. We're kind of rather old age people in that respect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not just because of our actual age, but because, you know, uh, yeah. we're dealing with the things that are sort of, you know, the uh, the eternal verities and, um, and the things that have been proved, you know, uh, through tradition to stand and hold people up and of course what has changed is that every era has a new age mm. Um, mm. <laughs> uh, and of course we had That's a new perfect. age a hundred years ago you know um, after the first world war and um, um, that changed a lot of things and if we go back to Alexandria you know um, in the sort of first and second centuries BC they had a new age too so um, this sort of keeps on happening in every age but um, the one at the moment, we're, we're really, really keen that people go to the roots of the tree um, um, and rather than looking at the things that are on the dangly branches or on the dangly twigs, um, to really go to the trunk of the tree, to go to the roots of the tree of tradition because mm -hmm. all the things that, that hold us up um, are ought to be found there. And of course they come on under all kinds of titles and disciplines. But, um, but the the ancient mysteries um, are, are are the things that underlie absolutely everything, and because of you know history, um, those ancient traditions were kind of siphoned off to one side as being terribly evil and disgusting by mm -hmm. by Christianity, and so um, and so there's been a long period where things were underground, and now in our lifetime. Um, things come up to the surface again, which is really mm -hmm. because our teachers had a very different experience. They had to not tell their fellows about what they were doing. We're in an era now where we can talk about what we're doing um, and not be um, worried about, you know, what people think at work and so forth, um, because we're part of a, 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 an equally valid tradition that's ongoing. And this is part of the reason, I think, why we've always turned towards the more ancient themes. I mean, the Beowulf is a good example. Right. Of course, it's based on an 8th century a manuscript of a poem that could be actually older than that. Mm. Um, yeah. A Saxon poem, and of course, it's a very famous t tale, you know, Beowulf the hero slays a dragon, sure. and kills monsters, and so forth. But woven into all that is a wonderful network of, of magic and mystery and wisdom. And what uh, what I wanted to do with with creating this was to, uh, as as with the other decks, particularly like the Arthurian one especially, uh, was to look at this very deep level of wisdom, and explore it in such a way that everyone could access it. And that's one of the things that 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 we've I think we've both noticed over the years mm -hmm. in working in the field is that a lot has changed because at the beginning it was considered very erudite and esoteric, literally. Then it became very popular. Then it became almost too popular in the sense that people were exploiting it almost. They were producing new ideas and new decks and books and so forth, um, but didn't go very deep into it. Now, I'm glad to say that that pendulum has swung back and people are much more concerned now to have something deeper uh, and more profound, perhaps, than, you know, than they might have had, say, 10 years ago. Well, I think everyone, everyone is looking for, uh, you know, in every age, people are looking for, for the guidance for their lives. Um, they're also looking for um, a, a wisdom that will uphold them. They're looking for stability. And I know a lot of people are looking for certainties, which, of course, mm. this world does not deal in. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, the one thing we can always say about any time in the world is that things will change. Mm. Uh, and so the things that hold us stable and supported uh, are those things that, you know, the, the way that our spiritual path unfolds. Uh, and, and, and that could be at one end for someone might be they're joining a particular discipline or tradition or religion. Um, mm. And at the other end, it might mean that they light a candle and make a wish. Uh, so, you know, both those ends of the tradition 
have always been part of it in the same way that um, you know in Hinduism you know you can have people who are deeply into all the complexities of Hindu mythology they worship the Trimurti they go to temple at one mm. end and at the other end there's a little old man who sits under a tree and the tree is his divinity mm. um, right. and, and that is how he understands his life is through that tree so uh, so we have a, a very vast range I think of uh, of people coming to uh, look at, at divination, um, whether through tarot or oracles, and that these things um, will, of course, initially appeal to them because they have a, a particular story or tradition that they're interested in, um, uh, and also because they like the art. Yeah. Um, people very often mm -hmm. are drawn by the art, um, so the art has to be good. Uh, and sometimes people like very simple art, and sometimes they like it very complex. Uh, but somewhere in the middle is usually good. Well, I love especially the Joe Machine's work for the Beowulf, which I think right. is incredibly striking. I mean, he really presents you with the characters that you uh, are going to encounter on your oracular journey. But it's deeply heroic artwork it, it, it as well. It is very much so. He really understands much. And he that comes from period. that really sort of a male place, which is, you know, one of <laughs> embodied as a man uh, in a tradition. Although of course there are many female characters within uh, within the cards as well, um, but they're, they're totally com coming out of that world, which is beautiful. well. It's one of the things I love about tarot is its flexibility. Um, I mean, in the decks, I mean, between us now, I haven't actually counted recently, but I think we've done about twenty between us. I believe that over the years and. Um, one of the things I love about it is the fact, well, I mean, for yourselves, I, I did the Byzantine, which you do, which of course is based on that particular culture, which right. is full of the most amazing, uh, deep, significant, spiritual essence, I would say, almost, of that culture. And also uh, the Tara that can be read mm. exactly, very easily, because Scylla, Scylla Conway's pictures are, yeah. are very... Um, explicatory so you look at them and you know what the situation is about you don't have to kind of mm -hmm. oh, i have to go and look this up in the book you can see which is very good and then you did the da vinci as we already mentioned and we also i did the grail which you also do these days and that mm -hmm. drew on you know 40 years or so of actual uh, research into the arthurian and grail mm -hmm. stories in general which i've written about very extensively but it was nice to draw on it and to make what I think is still the only tarot that has a story that, that you can lay them side by side and it tells the story of the Grail, which I think is exciting. It's a bit like a cartoon in a way, uh, mm -hmm. in the old-fashioned sense of cartoon, perhaps rather more than the modern one. But the idea right. of being able to lay the pictures, the pictures out and have that tell a story mm -hmm. is quite exciting. But again, it draws on a really deep uh, foundation of, uh, of myth and legend and spirituality. No, it really does. I mean, the, all, all of your decks um, have some kind of extra dimension to them. You know, you're mentioning that as far as laying out the cards for the Grail Tarot with the Da Vinci Enigma. You have the Enigma, the, the backs of the cards are, are yeah. like mm -hmm. different, so you can lay those out. There, there's always some other extra dimension in that um, with this, with to, just to, well, I, I have to say, Byzantine is probably my favorite uh, tarot, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. it, it really is. It's, it's, uh, I, I love his artwork. I love the time period. Um, as well, and so uh, when this became available, it's just like we have to have it. So, um, <laughs> well, I love it that she painted it with egg tempera yeah. because you know, which is exactly yeah. how icons are painted, uh, mm -hmm. and, and and how beautiful is that? I mean, they are just stunning pictures. Well, I've worked with lots of oh, different artists, but she's the only one who actually went to Italy and sat there in those cathedrals and buildings and various oh, other okay. places yeah. and wow. actually painted them right there you know she'd make sketches and paint them which gave it i think a special very special energy but at the same time i mean again not one that you've done but i did something called the sherlock holmes tarot which again <laughs> just showing the develop the way in which tarot is a flexible thing i mean i thought i was just sitting here one day and i thought isn't it interesting that you you apply to the tarot to find clues to your situation just as holmes goes in search of clues to solve mysteries mm. so the two things fell into place perfectly but i think that you know that, that there you've kind of got the heart of all divination because mm. the springboard of of the oracle is always the question yeah um yeah. Uh, and of course if you ask the right question 
you'll get a very clear answer. And if you ask a very fuzzy question, you'll get a very unclear answer. Mm. <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, divination always asks us to sharpen up our work. Um, and that, you know, uh, we should always take, take in, you know, uh, to mind the story of King Croesus of Lydia, you know, who was very picky about which oracle he went to ask his question of, but unfortunately didn't take very much time about forming his question. And so he asked, um, as he had a Persian build-up on his border, he said, mm. could I go to war with Persia? And the answer came back, if King Croesus of Lydia goes to war with Persia, a great empire will be destroyed. Unfortunately, of course, it was his own. <laughs> it was, yeah, right. so this, is, this is a sort of a horrible yes, warning. Yes, the right of, question. Exactly. You know, the first rule of divination is, you know, if you don't want to know the answer, then for goodness sake, don't ask the question. But if, if you do want to know the answer, then the second rule is definitely ask the right question. Mm. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Preferably not a yes or no one. Yes. You know. <laughs> or an either or one. <laughs> That's any conversation, really, just yeah, yes or no. Yeah. <laughs> it's no way to forward any, con any conversation. Yeah. Um, and actually, you, you really do uh, stress that in the Babel Forkel, just to talk about yeah. the most recent yeah. one here, um, the importance of the question. And the way it's kind of divided up is really, I mean, there are, it's uh, 20, car 20 cards plus the three Nords, right? Um, and so, you know, so you have, and each one, you mentioned Joe Machine's uh, painting there, it's, it's really quite striking. Um, and uh, they're really just beautiful, beautiful works of Arthur Beowulf himself. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and he's he's painted a lot of uh, big um, pictures which are not included in this, just because of mm -hmm. his. Mm -hmm. Some of which will be on display at the uh, event we were mentioning earlier. That's mm -hmm. we're going to have some of his uh, some of the original. Oh. Uh, I mean, we look. I mean, just this this is the Beowulf, and I mean, it's right. immediately striking. Uh, you you immediately feel you're in the presence of this extraordinary warrior. And and the same goes for both the, you know, the less wonderful ones, and also the objects, and of course, the norns, which we chose to do. There are three norns who, mm -hmm. are the guardians of fate, and we chose to have those. Mm -hmm. the other one, we chose to have those in black and white to distinguish them very well. Mm -hmm. And and again, you know, Kathleen was saying earlier about the the tree of tradition. And of course, in the in the working with the Barrel of Oracle, you are going to the greatest tree of mythology, Yggdrasil, which mm -hmm. is on which all the worlds is fa are found. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't go much more much more into the tree of tradition than that. Really, you'd go there, you meet the Norns, you start your question, and then you go on your journey. And um, and so far, I have to say that what I've heard from people is that they are getting very good responses from it and learning a lot. <coughs> There's a lot to learn, and, and this this is almost a uh, you know it's it's a uh, it's more than an oracle or uh, just you know there there as you mentioned there are a lot of oracles a lot of deck decks out there but this um, treats the, uh, the source material with a lot of respect first off and so that that's you know has to do with your nature as well in fact there's there's even a prose um, synopsis of the of the story itself in here so if you haven't read Babel it's actually in here <laughs> well yes I mean I I know that it's not that easy to read although there are some great translations around now but I just thought well you know let's just have let's just have a summary because not everyone has either got time or inclination to read it and Ginger Virginia did a wonderful job uh, right. of summarizing it that that was her all her own work and it, it's magnificent <laughs> she studied it really closely so. yes because she'd studied it at college so Mm -hmm. which I didn't so you know and it was slightly out of my what I'd call my normal comfort zone because as you know mm -hmm. I tend to concentrate on Celtic or Arthurian but obviously I've always loved the poem and again just thought wow what a wonderful oracle you could get from that and then meeting up with Joe was just one of those it one really of those was. accidents of fate if you like that mm -hmm. we met and I discovered that his work was very much focused mm -hmm. on the heroic and mm -hmm. so, you know, you couldn't really ask for a better better artist, I think. Mm. But and and, I agree. and mind you, not just to say that he doesn't just do. Uh, I'm just looking for one of the uh, one of the women on here as well. So, so he doesn't just do. Um, um, no, but it's a heroic you know. story, which is of the Saxon world, and it, it there is. are a lot of guys going to do um, you know sort of mm -hmm. deeds in in other people's lands. So yeah. Um, and it is very Saxon. I, I, I love it that after Beowulf has been successful, you know, Rothgar does the, you're very welcome to stay, 
but and then he enumerates a whole load of things that could happen to Beowulf in the course of his career, which are kind of very Saxon, which I mean you might want to get on with your journey now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here here's is West, who is the, the queen of, of that yeah. same person. And yeah. um, it's uh, again you can see from that how sensitively Joe has, has presented yeah, her. But lovely. she also has mm -hmm. That look that she might just you know get up off that throne and yes. give you a bit of a beating she, if yeah. you didn't do she, the right she thing. She might say, "I think <laughs> beat now." Yes, yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. So, and I had done a uh, I, and the way this is set up, it's it's it really there there are, it's many facets, many nuances uh, to this uh, deck and different ways to to approach it. So you have the um, uh, a card can either be the hero or the challenger. Is that right, hero challenger? Yeah. I yeah. believe yes. <clears throat> okay, so you can choose, you know, which is going to. So it's a. So that's an interesting, you know, concept too. And also the the method of reading by using the world tree there, you know, as well, like the, for directionally. Mm. Really fascinating. I've never seen that before in, in, in a deck as far as how how it how it falls. You know, what what the direction will be, uh, in in relation to uh, the world tree. So what the way it comes together as a system is is really. Uh, fascinating and beautiful i think well thank you well i mean this this partly grew out of teachings that we'd done over the years um mm -hmm. i had a, i had a uh, for many years i used to do a a course on the arthurian legends in which uh, i did i drew a map on the on the whiteboard and would then put in place names and we we would make journeys to those particular places mm. and encounter particular characters and this later i later encapsulated into the camelot oracle which is now sadly out of print. Good one there for you to do. Um, and, okay. um, <laughs> uh, you know, that sort of, that led me to this understanding that if you can mix the two, th the idea of places and people, mm. then you have a much deeper level. Mm. So when it came to do the Beowulf, I did the same. Mm. And I'm currently working on a third one now, mm. uh, Sherwood Oracle, which is to do with the Robin Hood legends. Mm. Right. That's also again uses some of the places in the actual forest, which mm. does of course exist. But so. there's something really interesting about that concept mm. that um, because you know we're all who we are, but we're different when we're in different places. Yeah. So we're different at work mm. than say if we were going to say visit a friend in hospital. Uh, mm. We're we're different again um, if we go to some big public event or gathering where we're very celebratory uh, and we're with lots of other people. We get into <laughs> mode um so i think there's something very interesting that when we put people in different conditions and places um uh, that different things come out uh, and this gives us the nice variability um for an oracle so i think it's very interesting it does and i think mm -hmm. turning up the tree and down the tree is something again that's part of shamanic tradition mm -hmm. had a lot to do with and um i think that because the the whole way in which the Norse uh, tradition organizes itself, or organizes its understanding of the universe, is around mm -hmm. this idea of the mm -hmm. tree. Right. So we go to certain worlds and certain places for a specific purpose. And that mm -hmm. is what here makes it very rich and mm -hmm. um, effective. Mm -hmm. no, I, I completely agree. I, I had done a reading this morning uh, with it uh, personally, I got her Rothgar. Um, and um, and so, which more did I get? I had it right now. Anyway, but um, yeah, just how it worked together. I'm not going to say what my question was. I, I actually, I took, okay. I, took a good, I took a good amount of time to figure out what the question should be because because it says yeah, mm, you do that. Um, and so, but uh, and then deciding on if he was going to be a hero or a challenger, that was going to be that was tough. We wind up being mm. a hero. I'll let you know that. But um, just the in the way they they were presented. Um, they really can be either. They can be that champion, yeah. or they can be that challenger. The way the artwork mm -hmm. molds with that style, with that um, you know that method of use as well, is it, really brilliant. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, it's I can't say say enough good things about the you know this uh, work. All we're so happy to have it. Well, that's, it's been, very, that's very kind. I had a great uh, response from someone not long ago, actually, who did some readings, several readings with it, and uh, he wrote to me later and said. What I love about this is, it just tends to say yes <laughs> or no. But <laughs> it's kind of it's not this sort of um, you know if you did that it might happen if you do this yes. it might happen and there you various you know possibilities and things that can support you. This one gets right there. Yes, but it's know? very Saxon in that respect, yes, isn't it? it? Is. You know, <laughs> that, that's that true. Life, that's life that's was good. short and um, yeah. one tended to have to make very quick decisions and. 
your fate right. lay before you. You're weird. So, um, uh, exactly. which is exactly what you know what the Norns do, isn't it? So, um, yeah. one of the, I mean, one of the things when we were working on this was, and this really, this idea really did come from from Kathleen as much as from my head, um, was this idea of that that the Norns shouldn't just be there to help you decide where you went or to guide your steps, but that they should actually have something to say as well. So yes. ended up, we ended up having Kathleen write these wonderful weavings, these little gnomic right. about yes. we to, to read one. Yeah, I mean, pick, indeed. Pick it's anyone, fine, there we are. If you like. And you it's can fine do what to, I mean. It's um, fine to good. So that uh, you have one to do. The, the champion or the challenger, the hero or the challenger, mm -hmm. reference mm -hmm. to your in in the card that you choose to represent you and you have right. a place and then you mm -hmm. have the guidance of the norns and sometimes i know some people who like to read it at the beginning which i think is cheating a bit but the idea is that you read it at the end and it's like the cap on everything else that you've learned so far mm -hmm. could you do one so th this is for the card of of, of rethlich and and rothmund who are the sort of two um, sons of Rothgar, so they're basically they're they're youths, um, and uh, as hero, um, the what the Norns say about about you know these these the young men is, youths the strength that sings abiding, faces turned towards the sun, life is good while it is growing, future days like bean rose sprout, doubt is a beetle at heart's vein nibbling down what has just begun. Now the time to aid, encourage, spread protection in and out. But then the challenger, uh, if, if you take them as challengers, youth the promising of harvest, hiding in an ear of wheat, stalks that greenly shoot up skyward, beaten down by violet storm. Grain unripened sinks to earth now, scattered by one summer's heat, patiently to tomb bestowing, promising to be reborn. So they're, you know, they're Wonderful. they're they're wonderfully kind of. Is that positive or negative? Someone would say perhaps, but mm. um, you know, it's the well. The Norns say things like they are, yes. a bit like the Delphic Oracle to King Croesus. Mm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your contribution uh, to this. It makes it such a such a rich um, overall well, project. I, I, I'd be the first to admit that over the years, although my names appeared on a lot of these things. Um, I've always had you in the background, and you've always advised me. <laughs> so she's she's my worst critic, um, yeah. but in a good way. And uh, I, I know that a lot of the things that lo some of the best ideas um, that are in some of the things I've done came from you. So thank you. Say that publicly. <laughs> that's very that, that's very touching. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So how do you? Uh, how does that? What, what drives you both to to, to keep creating? I, I know you pull back into the. No, I'm know. not driven. I'm inspired. Yes. Okay, I'm, very good. I was <laughs> I was inspired. Never Much driven. better. Yes. I, I okay. never do any work if I'm driven. I, it's like herding mm. cats otherwise. Mm. Yes. Mm. Not good a point. good idea. I think we have to be inspired by what we yes. do. And I've never written anything, you know, that I wasn't inspired to do. Uh, and, and I probably would not take a commission if someone um, went really off piste and gave me some weird topic. It's like, yes, mm -hmm. I could write about it, but no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've tried to do that too, and in principle, mm. I I absolutely agree with it. But sometimes, financial necessity has meant that I've had to to, to write yeah. that you know publishers yourself accepted, of course. But some publishers will say to you, "Couldn't you just write another little book like that one you wrote two years ago because <laughs> that sold really well?" Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have done that with perhaps less enthusiasm than I might have had. But but again, I always try. As far as possible, I check everything. This is this is what's really important to me, is mm -hmm. that I don't just write something that is out of my own imagination. And if I do, I say, I think, not this is fact. Mm -hmm. Because I think one of the things that infuriates me are the people who write books in which mm -hmm. they, they say things that are demonstrably not true, mm -hmm. but are mm -hmm. to them. But they won't say it's true to me. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. no reason why they shouldn't to, for themselves. I just can't yeah. stand it when they kind of say that it's, um, you know, that this is mm. this is gospel, you know, um, because if you don't do the research, how can you really be profound or find the profundity but, in the subject? But also as British writers, of course, you know, um, 
you know, we don't have such a large a large market as you do in the states, and so uh, I, w I would always say we would have written the books that we that we have written. We just like to have written them more slowly. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's <laughs> because, true. Of course, yeah. books don't stay in print either, which is the other problem. People sort of, um, you know, don't always keep things keep things going. And several publishers, of course, have, have gone under. So we've had several quite bad mm -hmm. experiences of, uh, of that, you know, twice in our life, uh, particularly severe, when all of our work just about sort of went out of the window because someone went bankrupt. So mm -hmm. uh, it was very difficult. So um, so I suppose, you know, th there's always the book you're working on. Um, there's the book you've just finished and there's the book you're playing. Yes. Because that's, that's who we are. Uh, and it's nice to have periods of fallowness. Uh, between and have have the space to be able to develop ideas um, and sometimes of course you know we have ideas that we've had in our minds for a really long time yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and and sometimes they they, they come to birth but mm. not all of them do so um, mm -hmm. this is just the way of life I mean I'd wanted to do Beowulf for ages and you know I mean partly it was because the right artist hadn't come along so the same yeah. when I met Joe, right. like that's the one, you know, and he was so very open to the idea of it. And I'm hoping that we'll get to work together on something else in the mm. future. Um, but I mean, you know, you said at the beginning that that Kathleen has done about eighty books. If we add them all up together, the things we've <laughs> both done, both together and apart, oh, it's so, about yes, two hundred and fifty. It really is. It's a lot. Which oh, my is horrific, really. Even at our at <laughs> horrific, eight, I would call it horrific. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I love the people who come up to you at, at book fair, book events and say, "I've read your book. I really enjoyed it." So, <laughs> Great one. Well, Which <laughs> they go, oh, well, well, you? Well, you read that one, one on? <laughs> oh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, with within that too, I, I really I love how you describe it as inspiration versus drive. You're you're quite mm -hmm. right. And passion. So, what would you say to someone who who doesn't know who has something that they want to manifest but don't don't really know where to start? You know, you said the Beowulf was you know it was in your mind for a long time and it, it had to find the right artist to come to, for that to come together. You know, what would you say to uh, someone who has you know a similar kind of vision and it, how how do they make it something to manifest? Or oh, just well, I mean, if you're right. talking about if you're talking about a deck, whether an oracle or a tarot, um, I mean, mm -hmm. the important thing is you have got to have an artist um, because you know. Even if you even if you start out with the idea, yeah. But before um, you get the artist, you have mm. to sit with it and yeah. love the idea uh, mm -hmm. to the point where you can see it and conceptualize it, so that the map of it is clear. Mm. Um, because um, we've seen far too many people who've had a good idea, um, but they didn't sit with it long enough. Um, they mm -hmm. didn't develop it, and they didn't see it through. Um, all the processes um, uh, of its coming down because something doesn't beam down wholly and entirely. You might get the the notion, the bubble in which the idea comes down. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. but the um, organizing that and sorting it out takes a long time. Um, yeah. Our very first tarot that we did, um, we had the idea for it, I think, in about 1986 or 87. Um, oh and then we meditated it for about two or three years before it was painted mm. um, and so we really knew and you, you could throw it any way you wanted to it, we always knew um, how it would behave um, mm -hmm. because we you know the shape of it was there so I said get the shaping yes. the shaping is essential then look for the answer. Right. don't rush <laughs> I mean yes I mean I, I mean yes Kathleen's absolutely right of course you you've got to make mm. sure the idea is uh, as close as you can get it to perfection before yeah. you do anything and take that takes time I mean mm. it, yes, you might have I've had the idea for, for years mm. and not anything about it well in the in response to, to that I would I always have one response to people who say I've always wanted to write a book I say well okay the most important thing is to show up sit there in front of your computer mm -hmm. and even if you have a blank screen after an hour and you're going crazy because you can't put anything down or even if you write something down the next day looks really awful doesn't matter the important thing is to actually get it going because yeah. movement helps it's you know? about faithfulness um, yeah. you, you use the same principles you did when you were a young person 
and you went to meet your beloved under the church clock or whatever, uh, or the spire, or the station, or wherever it was, um, and you showed up, yes, even if he or she didn't, um, but you kept on showing up, and, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what, it's uh, because taking an idea and developing it is, it is actually learning to trust it, and mm -hmm. it has to trust you, and so you have to continually be practicing uh, with and showing up for it. Okay. That's, that's really the most of it. And if it's good, um, then other people will like it too. And especially if you're working with, uh, as, as your source of inspiration, for instance, is a specific work like Beowulf. But also I'm thinking of, uh, you know, I did a tarot uh, based on the work of Nostradamus. Uh, mm -hmm. Throughout the whole process of writing that, I was very conscious of what I guess I would call the spirit of Nostradamus standing right mm -hmm. behind me looking over my shoulder and if I got something wrong, I really felt I'd got it wrong. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, that again is about respecting mm -hmm. the original mm -hmm. material too. So, if you have a theme, if you're doing, for instance, a fairy tarot, then, mm -hmm. you know, respect the fairy beings. If you're doing right. one based mm -hmm. on an artist or a writer or, or a tradition, then respect that. You know, I couldn't have done Byzantine yeah. and neither could Scylla without being respectful of yeah. the Byzantine tradition. And to know their work really well. And know their work well, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. it's yeah. not easy, you know. I mean, I, I worry when people kind of go, yeah, this is, I've had this idea, you know, I'm, I, it's only going to take me a couple of months. And I kind of moan inside because I think it's not, it's yeah. going to take you two years at least, or I mean, it won't be I, worth it. Yeah. You're, exactly, you're, you're exactly right. I, I, I really love the way that you were um, describing this, you know, it, it's like a relationship really. And, and all it these, is. Uh, work to like a relationship where there's there's love there's trust um and yeah. you really you know you, and i think that really comes through in what you're what you produce too they're not just you know things you're doing just to to use a more american but to make a buck yeah you know it's, yeah. it's something that's you're 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 <clears throat> creating to really give something meaningful to the world yeah um I mean, to do that you really have to um just to develop that relationship with it it's funny you know i, I have my own book ideas and things, and um, I have a couple sketched out and stuff. And I get impatient with myself sometimes that I haven't gotten more into it, but like then it's just like, okay, well, it's not the right time, or I'll put a little bit here, a little bit there, and yeah. developing that understanding and relationship with yes. with uh, things is important. You're because, exactly. I mean, any fool can sit down and, and, and receive, and I mean, we could do it now, you know, it's like making a tarot by committee. You know, we might decide to right. do, you know, the tarot of miniature dogs or something you know uh which someone could do and i yeah, dare say someone will <laughs> <laughs> now that you put it out there it will happen <laughs> but you know um but i mean you know you have to an, have an incomparable um um sense of, of miniature dogs and um and yes you could sort of work out you know who was the high priestess and who was you know the four of swords or whatever i'm just making um, notes you know, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, well, because ahead. one can do something mm. doesn't necessarily mean one should do something no, um, as someone who did the tarot of beer may now be have discovered uh, <laughs> it was so a very many. brown tarot <laughs> it's all i can say <laughs> very, very brown. It's very, yeah <clears throat> it's a frothy read um, yes, so, um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh so uh Kathleen, you have uh, with us coming up uh very uh, next uh the uh, celtic book of the dead i want to talk a little bit about that yeah. um so that's going to be coming out in the, in the fall here uh for us with red feather and uh so if this is a, a newer edition so uh what uh uh, what's special about this uh, deck coming up oh uh, i'm i'm so excited that this is sort of coming uh coming back again because it, it it's uh yeah. Uh, it, it's one been the one that's been very close to my heart indeed because Wonderful. it's based upon the um, the voyage of Maldoon, which is a sort of an eighth ninth century Irish text, uh, mm -hmm. which basically starts out uh, as a vengeance quest. The story because um, mm -hmm. Maldoon, who's been brought up secretly, has discovered his real parentage and um, he's discovered that someone's killed his dad, and so. He wants to get in a ship and he wants to go across the waves and and slaughter the people who did this. Um, and so the druid who helps him create his boat, and, you know, the gathering of those who should go with him uh, is done. And 
because they deviate in one respect from the Druids' um, instructions of how they should voyage, um, they get blown off course. And so the ship ends up visiting um, 32 or 33 locations, um, different islands, which of course mm -hmm. uh, make up or comprise the islands, uh, uh, both the Blessed Islands, and those islands that you probably wish you weren't shipwrecked on because they have rather scary things. Mm -hmm. Um, and they really, um, uh, these islands form a kind of uh, cosmology uh, of states um, uh, that we may need to deal with in different ways. And, uh, and you know, it does constitute a Celtic book of the dead. Uh, though on each of the islands they meet various um, rather difficult or exciting or wonderful things. Um, which they then have to deal with in different ways. And being human beings, they sometimes act well, and on other times they don't, as we don't. And so it is um, a means both of divination, because the islands can be drawn. Um, so you might find yourself, say, um, uh, on the island of the shuttered door, where um, it's a, it looks a little bit like um, an oil rig, so like a mushroom. So it has a base, it sticks out of the water, and it, then it has a, a platform on the top, and they call to find out who is within, but they can't get inside themselves. But there's obviously something of great promise that, that lies within that. Um, one wonders whether they sailed through time and space to find an oil rig, because it, it looks so like one, and it sounds so like one. Uh, the thing that so, so the the deck can be used. Each one of the the cards which have the islands on can be used as ordinary divination uh, mm -hmm. to help you untangle the things that have got tangled, to discover the ways you should go, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but it can also be used in lots of different ways. I've I've used it over very many years to um, uh, as as a means of people being able to explore different things. Uh, <clears throat> because each of these, um, the route of the uh, of the voyage and the islands that are visited, um, can act as particular prompts for um, meditations. For example, on the environment, um, there's a lot of environmental distress and despair. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, when you go into the other worlds, there there are other solutions. When you look at a problem out of time, in timelessness, it shows you different things. So it can be used for that. And then, of course, it can actually be used for people who are dying um, and to help us prepare for our death in exactly the same way that all books of the dead have always done, from the Egyptian Book of the Dead to the Tibetan Book of the Dead, uh, which should be read before you die um, so that you discover exactly um, the kinds of things that you may meet or the conditions that you need to sort out before you go. And so... Um, it's quite versatile in that respect. And the art is absolutely stunning by a wonderful artist, uh, Danuta Meyer, uh, mm -hmm. who is um, a Polish artist. Uh, whose work is just so magical. And I know, you know, she, she really threw herself into this um, and had a very difficult time with some of the, the more challenging <laughs> islands um, that, that are in the uh, cards. And I remember with, there's an island of cannibal horses, which is a really horrible thing to contemplate. Uh, mm -hmm. And it really sort of comments upon, you know, how human beings are with human beings, but it's doing it through, you know, the sign of shore of, of animals. And she mm -hmm. said, oh, I'm not sure I can draw this. Um, and then she had to go home to Poland for a family funeral. Um, mm -hmm. And as you know, funerals are often strange things come up at funerals and people get very cross and het up and excitable. And she came back and she had such a head of steam because of the various frustrations that had been at this particular funeral that she did to get the island of cannibal horses with no bother at all. So, um, but she really, because she's a vegan, so it was quite hard for her to even contemplate this as a, as a thing. But there are some very beautiful islands. Um, the island um, of the silver net, where this wonderful net is kind of hanging from, made of silver, and it's kind of the the place where we're really coming out of ordinary human realms into um, the other world. 
and the island of singing birds, where mm. the birds are singing perpetually. Uh, and to mm. hear the voices of those birds is to also hear the voices of your ancestors, which is a very beautiful thing. So each one of the cards has um, some guidance. It also has, uh, it also asks questions and it also shows um, three or four cards, how they may act together uh, when you draw them together and um, how one might read those. Because I think the, the skill of reading one card after another um, is quite a special one because we, we blend the cards sometimes rather as colours when we have a wet colour next to another wet colour that they kind of blend mm -hmm. together so that the meaning um, enhances or fuses together for us. So I've tried to give examples of how it would be to, to read with. Um, but I'm so pleased that, that you're doing um, Celtic Book of the Dead because, to say, it is um, one of my very deep favourites. And I, I have to say, too, that of all the things that, that Kathleen has produced, it's my favourite as well. And the one I found, find most profoundly really does give you a very deep response. Um, I mean, I, I remember that, you know, we, we, when, we first, when you first came up with the idea, you know, because we'd all, we all knew about the Tibetan Book of the Dead and the Egyptian Book mm -hmm. of the Dead, but was mm -hmm. there a Celtic one, you know, and obviously um, nothing called that, but that is the, the equivalent of what, um, what this uh, pack has, has shown to be the case. But I do remember that the publisher at the time was very <laughs> doubtful about the title because they said, well, I'm not sure we can use the D word, you know, people really don't like that. And so for quite a long time in our house, it was known as the Celtic Book of the Not Very Well, because we thought that might be... <laughs> 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 the Celtic Book, book of the... And it was really uh, nice. Kind of slightly under the weather. Yeah. <laughs> they took, um, you know, they took it to a book fair and someone had, because they used it as a subtitle, they said, why didn't you make that the title? So thank you, whoever you were. Um, <laughs> that was great. But I think there's something really, you know, uh, I know that in Western culture, we're not very good at, uh, at death, but there is something about the way we sit on the fence actually makes us die or puts us into a dormant position. And so uh, yeah. a lot of this deck is about coming alive again. Mm. Um, it's about really engaging with the things that are tangled and knotted and not being sorted out um, rather than just sitting on them, hoping that they'll go away. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, we enter into some kind of dying condition when we do that. And I think there's quite a lot of, uh, of that in the world. So this is a deck that really fights against that. Right. I, see um, yeah, had, I see we've got some nice comments from someone called Alicia Graham. Who, <laughs> yes, I saw when, that. When it's that. coming and can she pre-order it? I mean, when in the fall. An, yes, I think we have it uh, for October right now. Um, but um, we'll have some earlier. Right. They're actually, the uh, the data should be going up soon for pre-orders too. Um, you pre-order it on Amazon, I know that. Good. Um, and uh, so it's, uh, so yes, it'll be here sooner than uh, sooner than we realize, uh, which would be wonderful. Well, and, I've, uh, I've we'll done the other thing, more... so that's always a good sign. Yeah. That, you yes. know, that good. Yes, something exactly. About to happen, well, it does so. look as though you've got at least one sale there, hopefully. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, so, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, that that is coming out uh, soon, and uh, we'll have to do more. And, and you've done a, a beautiful treatment uh, here today of that, uh, Kathleen. But uh, we'll do another more in depth. Uh, yeah, no, talk sure. About mm. that when it comes out uh, there later in the later in the year. And uh, my goodness, uh, so I have all your stuff here. I, I did want to uh, not not talk about Untold Tarot, which I really love too. <laughs> 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 it just brought them all. Um, and actually, this was actually the first one that, we, that you published with us. Yeah. And so that has a special place in my heart. And this is about uh, reading uh, Marseille style decks and, and, and others mm. like that, more, um, you know, some more uh, mm. traditional older tarots um, as well. And so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great addition to anyone's library. There's a great um, <clears throat> interest rising in the reading of those kinds of decks as well. Um, and so uh, that's, uh, that's great for anybody who wants to get into that kind of reading. Uh, too, and so the journey continues. So now, what's what lies ahead for both of you? What's what's up next? Um, well, 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 well I'm just things. just about to hand in something, of course, which is uh, right. Tarot Medieval, which is actually not my tarot, but it's one that I've translated from a 1939 tarot, which had a very short life due to the uh, onset of the Second World War, as it was published in France, uh, and so this was written by Francis Rolt Wheeler. 
um, and the art is, you know, no longer existent as far as we know. Um, there are a few copies of the deck, but they go for auction house prices. Um, and they're not things you would pick up easily on eBay, for example. Um, and in fact, someone did actually do a, um, a, a, a recolored, um, photocopied version of uh, some of the magazine articles that Rolt Wheeler had done and was selling it for something like $1,400. Uh, this was hand colored by themselves, this is. This no, an original thing. Um, so there's obviously a great desire for this to appear in the uh, the world. So it was. It's a tarot that's always um, interested us, and um, uh, we haven't got a copy of it ourselves. So we thought, well, it would be really nice if we could somehow bring this uh, into being again, so that people could see it. And so we've had the. I've had the help of um, Will King, and who's been doing, been restoring the art to. Um, to manifestation again, uh, which has been quite a challenge because um, we've been sort of working from um, just a few resources um, and, and researches that we've done. So um, it's been uh, an extraordinary work. Um, Francis Rolt Wheeler was um, someone who was British who moved to um, the States and had a a life there for a while and became an editor and a writer of mostly children's books, especially boys' books. Worked a lot with the Boy Scout movement. He did, he? indeed. Yeah. And um, and he was into the education of, 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 of children. Um, and then he suddenly completely changes his life and he moves in the late 20s to Carthage, which is <laughs> kind of, you know, oh, wow. the original Carthage. Um, and, uh, and there he is in North Africa, um, and he starts uh, a, a magazine called Astrosophy, which is a, an esoteric magazine. I mean, not unlike, you know, things like the Llewellyn magazine and so on that, that we're used to seeing, or, or like Prediction that, that we hear and still have. Um, and, and he kind of did a whole series of, uh, of articles and... Um, uh, uh, and, you know, sort of magical um, meditations. He did readings on current political situations. It was a very interesting magazine. Um, and some things were syndicated from other esoteric magazines in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. He came across these beautiful cards at the parish exhibition um, in the mid-30s, which were done um, by Christian Loring, about whom we have almost no information at all. Um, and he was very taken with these and um, hinted in his magazine that we would really like to do this tarot uh, with her. And um, uh, maybe his, um, I don't know whether his um, uh, readership actually helped fund doing this, but it did come out in um, just at the beginning uh, of 1939. And then, of course, the fall of France happened sort of Shortly right. afterwards, um, of course, mm -hmm. the, the esoteric magazine had to fold for that period because the Nazis completely um, finished um, anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so it, that's been a great pleasure to, to work on and to restore to the world again. So thank you very much for helping us with that project because it really is uh, extraordinary. So it's a, it's a more esoteric tarot. Um, he was very much into the Hermetic Mysteries, uh, uh, and so he's following the French magical tradition in this in this tarot. So it's um, an Oswald Worth style tarot. Uh, Oswald Worth was um, uh, a French uh, writer who, who did the tarot of the Bohemians and the tarot um, uh, of uh, really the sort of the medieval guilds people, really. Is, how that translates, but so it's coming as tarot medieval from us, and um, it's a, a very beautiful tarot, and I, I hope that people really enjoy um, having that real strong flavour of the French uh, esoteric tradition, um, and one which is um, leads us into the, deeper into the initiations of that world. 
Wonderful. Yes, and that, that's going to be next uh, spring summer uh, there for us too. So at least you can't you can't order again. That's going to be next year. Um, so uh, well, this is great. Um, we're just about out of time here. Uh, so how do uh, how do people get uh, a hold of you or in touch with? Are you on social media? Um, your websites or uh, how how do people keep up with what uh, what you're both up to? Well, yes. we, we have a website. Um, the, the address great. is www HelloQuest, that's one word, HelloQuest.org.uk. That's H-A-L-L-O-W, Quest, yes. all one word. Yes. Um, and we also have Facebook pages um, that we don't, well, I don't do very much with mine. Kathleen does quite a lot with her. I'm on nearly most days. A vast so. number of followers. Um, <laughs> so those those are the best places to find us. Certainly. And I can be found on Instagram under Tigerna Kathleen. That's T I G E R N A. C A I T L I N, all lowercase. Um, and I can be found there occasionally. I'm afraid life is too short for me to Twitter. Mm. <laughs> I've never done it. As, as a writer, I don't like I don't Not write in haiku, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Mm. All right. Well, I'm so glad we were able to do this. Uh, it's been a long time coming. It's been delightful talking with you both, and I'll see you soon, too. Looking forward okay. To that. Thanks Absolutely. very much, Chris. Uh, so, uh, thanks to everyone who was able to tune in today. All of their titles, Beowulf and What's Coming, you can pre order, you can order. It's all available on their VeteranMBS.com or Amazon, where if you want to get uh, your titles, uh, just go out and uh, check them out. Um, there's a lot of passion and love put into everything that they create um, right. here. So uh, thank, thank you both for being here. And thanks, for everyone, today. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Have a good. Great. Keep asking the questions. Indeed. Yeah. Keep asking the questions. It's a right question. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.